This episode brought to you by Decades of Movie Making. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Screen Test Podcast. I am Chaz, and as with me, as with me, <laughs> this is just a struggle. I'm sticking with it. With me, as always, is the time traveler who travels moment by moment, Aaron Milton. Wow, what a beautiful introduction. I, I will say, to this day, it still gets to me a little bit. I always want to introduce myself. Yep, I, I try to beat but, you to the punch every and time. And you do. <laughs> and every time, I, I'm pretty sure I open my mouth every single time about to speak, and then, you know, Yeah. nope. No, nope, not allowed to speak. If you've been listening to this and you're like, why does he do the intro so fast? That's why. I'm trying to cut yeah. Aaron off at the feet. Um, yeah. Not to mention I had to introduce you like three times there because today's just not my day for wording. Uh, good yeah. luck through today, this episode. Today sounds like a struggle for you, Chaz. So I'm doesn't... really looking forward to, to the rest of this episode. I'm tired. I've got a headache. It's the weekend. Let's just do this. Um, Aaron, <laughs> do you think, would you say you agree with the, either statement that life imitates art or art imitates life? Uh, yes, art definitely imitates life. Okay. But you don't think life imitates art? No, definitely no? only one way and not the other. See, I think the world of pop culture that you are born into says a lot about you. You wouldn't agree with that? Gosh. Uh, man, I don't, maybe it does. You know what, though? This is such an old person thing to say, though. Yeah, That's such an old person thing to say. Like, that so- is something... That feels like something that, like, a, a, yeah, a, an old person would just look at the 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 youth of today, <laughs> and they would just come up with a comment like that. Mm, so I, you know, TikTok. I don't want to agree. I don't want to agree with that because I'm not that old, Jess. Yeah, um, I'm older than you. But. You're older than me, and we'll talk. We'll get into that specifically. But I noticed something that happened in the 2010s, and I want to talk about it. I didn't send you notes. Um, we're not playing a game, so don't worry. My dog. Oh, geez. If it wasn't. If the dog wasn't crying and walking in a circle, would we be recording a podcast? Chaz, you are currently running on a dynamic mic. I cannot hear your dog. You're the only one that hears your dog. Until I edit this and have to edit him out every week. Do you actually hear him? Yes. In the edits? Yes. See, I don't know. Maybe I keep my mic down, turned down too much, but I never hear your dog. Your commentary on your dog is the only thing I know about your dog. I wouldn't even know your dog was there if you didn't point the camera at him just a minute ago. Other than that, I'd have no clue he was there. It's like a child. He's got both paws up on his crate and his face just smushed in between the bar. What a doofus. Anyways, um, I noticed something that happened in the 2010s, and I want your unfiltered, unprepped opinion on it. So I didn't send you notes so that we can get a fresh take on this, because your opinion is how I make my decisions. So I'm going to decide together. As all people should. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to decide together if this is a good thing or a bad thing. But to build some context, we're going to talk about the 2010s, but we're going to start in the 1980s. Wow. And what we're going to do is I have pulled... The number one highest paid actor for every year from 1980 to 2022. And we're going to talk about the year specifically if you want, but I kind of want to talk decades here and see what's going on. So this is, uh, well, first off, I'm going to guess the money differences between the highest paid actor in the 1980s compared is probably, it probably jumps like 50% every single year. I'm sure I didn't pull the actual Uh, numbers, but I just got names for you. are those not consistent from year to year? Well, that's what I want to talk about. There's something oh, that's okay. changed in in how we pay people or something. Where the type maybe uh, it's the type of movies we see. But we'll get there. Let's start with the eighties. You want to start with nineteen eighty itself? Who very first one, you absolutely don't have to do this every single year. Who would you think though was the highest paid actor in nineteen eighties? And in nineteen eighty, sorry. Uh Burr Reynolds. <laughs> okay. You're not terribly far off uh, it's clint eastwood oh that was my second guess i'm not even kidding clint eastwood's gonna be number two going through i would think man wasn't the 70s pretty much the end of the eastwood but he made it into the 80s twice interesting because I, I, I would think I, I was trying to think when his golden age yeah. would have landed when obviously westerns were still a yeah thing, good bad and the ugly was like early 70s right yeah yeah so that that is a little surprising but i thought it would have been kind of close where you would have gotten clint eastwood um, an interesting thing about these is usually you're the top paid actor when you have a big movie coming out the following year because your deal closes before the movie's made. Yeah. 
Um, but let's just, just for fun, and again, we absolutely don't have to do this every time, but uh, in 1980, <laughs> he made the movie Bronco Billy. So it's definitely not off that, but then you get into 80, uh, actually, no, in 80 as well, Any Which Way You Can came out. So that was a pretty pretty famous one. Um, and then he took 1981 off, apparently. So good for him. When did, uh, he did Bullet, right? When did Bullet come out? That feels like that would have been in the 80s. Um, I'm not seeing it. Let's I know, see. I'm putting you on the spot to say you need to go find. <laughs> did, he, did he do... Yeah, um, he did do Bullet. Bullet what? came out... 1968? Yeah. Yeah, 1968. Okay. So I, so that's way before that. What's funny is, I, if you were to just... Without looking up anything from that movie, if you were to tell me when I thought that movie came out, I would have thought maybe the 80s. I feel really dumb, though, when you pull up images of it because you're like, oh, that wasn't even close. Was he... Did he direct it? What did he have to do with Bullet? Wasn't he in the movie? I, I could... Oh, Steve I'm McQueen was in That's it. Steve McQueen. Yeah. Steve McQueen. I was so confused. Is this the first movie he directed? Um, no. Yeah, Steve McQueen joint. Steve McQueen and Clint Eastwood, though. Yeah. Kind of the same thing. I'll tell you this. You never see them currently in the same place. <gasps> <laughs> that was a very insensitive joke. I apologize. Uh <laughs> 1981. <laughs> You're also never going to get this one, so I'll just give it to you. The highest gross, or not the highest grossing, pardon me, the highest paid actor in 1981 was Jane Fonda. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, it, I guess what's kind of impressive, uh, you know what though? That is a little impressive because I don't think I would have picked a single female okay. in the 80s or probably even the 90s as the highest paid actor because. You would think, right? There was a there's a disparity in, in yeah. pay. So I mean, even though these are iconic names, there's definitely would they really way way more men on this list? Than women. Yeah. Well, um, hey, good for you, 1981. Well, I will tip I will tip my hat to my uh, what's coming up on my list here a little bit. I will say from night or pardon me, 2002 to current day, no women. Wow. So it's worse today. Yes. Than it was even in the 80s. Yeah. I oh, feel okay. like with Clint Eastwood, with Jane Fonda, you're getting a little bit of, uh, and maybe even the next one, you're getting a little bit of that 70s runoff. Um, yes. These are people who were big in the 80s, or pardon me, in the 70s, going into the 80s. 1982, Chevy Chase was the highest paid actor. With uh, that one is. I, I, if, I know, obviously, Chevy Chase was a very popular actor for a really long time, mm -hmm. but... I, I don't think there I don't if I bet a million dollars on it I would have never guessed the guy was ever the highest paid actor at some yeah. point. That's crazy to me. Highest paid actor for the entire year of 1982. I will say current and this may be crazy to say but I will say current not even current because we're going to talk about the 2010s. The type of movies that I grew up with they don't start until 1986. Um I'm going to run through a couple more here. In 1983 you have Harrison Ford makes sense Indiana Jones Star mm -hmm. Wars. Um 1984, you have Clint Eastwood again. And then in 85, you have Chevy Chase again. Weird. Yeah. So you have Clint Eastwood, Jane Fonda, Chevy Chase, Harrison Ford from 80 to 85. And then I think 1986, modern day, for what I'm going to call modern day, we'll call current postmodern. <laughs> uh, modern day is 1986, Tom Hanks. So what's strange to me, and you know, I kind of alluded to this at the beginning of the episode here, it's just. You would think, like, if I was the highest paid actor this year, mm -hmm. I'd likely be able to be the highest paid actor for the next couple of years. Mm -hmm. Because if I'm demanding that type of money now and I'm getting that type of money now, what changes to the next year that suddenly knocks me out but puts somebody else? That's kind of weird to me that it, it, it fluctuates as much as it does. I think that's the type of filmmaking that I am I personally am used to. As we'll talk about the 90s. You're not going to see a lot of repeats, especially back-to-back -back years. Yeah. Just, uh, that's very interesting to me. I did not expect that. 1986, uh, by the way, year you were born? That is, is correct. Dang it. I really wish you were born in 1987 because this one blew my mind. It's what I would consider uh, the Chevy Chase of my time with Steve Gutenberg. <laughs> what? He was the highest paid actor in 87. 
That is that is pretty <laughs> nuts. Uh, I do want to know though. Uh, I want you to give me at least a, a bit of a future preview because obviously I'm going to guess it's the only time he is the top paid actor on this list. He will be the top paid actor five different. No, I'm just kidding. This is it. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that legit. <laughs> Uh, but Tom Hanks, does Tom Hanks show up back on this list again? Uh, he's generations of top paid actor. He'll he'll really? stay in multiple decades on this list. That That's also a bit wild to me because, right, what's going to, to you, in your mind, mm-hmm. what types of movie commands the most amount of money? It's action films, right? Yeah, especially now. Uh, especially now because you can't justify a budget unless it is an action film. Right. So that's kind of crazy to me because Tom Hanks is not an action star. Mm-hmm. So to command that type of money but also never be an action star is kind of impressive. Uh, but okay, so Steve Gutenberg, uh, 1987. Let's see. Um, let's go back to 1986. Let's see what was demanding that much money. Let's see here. Did Big come out that year? Why will you not let me go back that far? 19... It, there are no records of movies at that time. <laughs> movies didn't exist. Okay, 1980 is when he hit the scene. Uh, 86, you're looking at Money Pit, Nothing in Common, Every Time We Say Goodbye. But what he's getting paydays for is what would come out the next couple years. Dragnet, uh, City of Crime, and Big. All right, so Big is probably... All just a payday from Big? That's insane that Big was the... Highest paid. I, mean, I know that was a big movie, but yeah, I see what that big mean. of a movie, that's a little crazy. But I, I didn't mean to. What else are you going to say? <laughs> How else do you replace? I know it was a humongous a movie. A grande <laughs> film. Uh, what was Gutenberg? So we that's have... That's the better question. What the heck Gutenberg Police did? Academy, right? Um, and sure. then My Three Dad, or Three Men and a Baby. Is that what it was called? Yeah. Uh, so let's see. Man, what happened to Steve Gutenberg? Do we need to do... A rundown on Steve Gutenberg? I mean... Does that need to be an episode? Does it? <laughs> Finding Gutenberg? Do a whole other <laughs> podcast. <laughs> All right. Uh, we, 19... we just review the, the films of Gutenberg. <laughs> oh, man. Police Academy 3 came out in 86. So what in the world was this dude doing in 87? Uh, uh, just making money, I guess. Just yeah. lots of money. The Bedroom Window, Police Academy 4... Amazon Women on the Moon, Surrender, and Three Men and a Baby. What? That's how he did it. He just made every movie in 1986. He just made a lot of movies all at once. I mean, that's uh, one way to do it. That's also, what's nuts about that is Police Academy 4? <laughs> yes. They were, I, like, that's crazy because I could have swore some of those Police Academy movies came out in the 90s, but I guess not. We're, oh, we're in the 87 and they're already four deep. Yeah. That's crazy. Four's the last one, right? That's good. I think so. Okay. Um, 1988, a young crooked tooth man by the name of Tom Cruise was the highest paid actor. Did he? Oh, he did have crooked teeth, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, look at some of those old pictures of Cruise. Yikes. Well, when you're the highest paid actor, guess yeah. what? You get those teeth fixed. <laughs> those, so usually, you know, you're an actor, you have a lot of money. I would say, okay, you've got veneers. Tom Cruise, what do you think they did to his mouth? Do you think he was like, Find me another person's teeth that are better than these. Or is that like ivory from an elephant? What What's actually in Tom Cruise's Man, name? That's a very good question. Because like he obviously never wore braces. Right. Oh, man. Imagine <laughs> him with braces, though. That's pretty awesome. Oh, man. this He did the Gutenberg method. Uh, he did Cocktail, Risky Young Disney. Guns, Rain Man, and Born on the Fourth of July. Oh, that's pretty. Yeah, those are some good movies, though. Yeah. Those are really good movies. I mean, he's cutting deals left and right and then in the final year of the 80s you have eddie murphy <clears throat> okay that that would make sense mm-hmm. that was his, he, his moment to me eddie murphy is quintessential 80s yeah like that was where he was absolutely at his peak so that that one actually makes a little bit of sense yeah it's crazy that it was that late in my mind um let's see his number one movie is obviously tower heist or pardon me norbit like, like gutenberg was hitting that list before him. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. 1989, you're looking at Harlem Knights. Oh, geez. Coming to America was 88. So he was he was using, I'm sure, Beverly Hills Cop and Coming to America to get a payday. So Harlem Knights and probably getting paydays for upcoming movies like another 48 hours. Dang. That's a crazy time for him to be the highest paid actor off of Harlem Knights. All right. You want to move into the 90s? 
Let's let's do it. I love the nineties. Do you want to start with old nineteen ninety? Papa Hanks makes another return. So he's back. Yeah. So Joe versus the volcano. Payday. <laughs> was that that big of a movie? Uh, the only movies he had in ninety. He has nothing in ninety one. Um, Bonfire of the Vanities and Joe versus the Volcano is what he's making movies off of to be the highest paid actor in ninety. That's cr- I mean good for him. Yeah, wow, but I'm guessing movies were going kind of slow in the nineties. <laughs> I mean, he's got Jeez. big movies on the horizon. He's got Philadelphia. He's got Sleeping in Seattle, Sleepless in Seattle. He's got A League of Their Own. He's in one episode. Of, <laughs> one episode. He's of got, Tales got from mail. The Crypt. Yeah, you got mails in there somewhere. How Forrest Gump's not till ninety four. So Saving Private Ryan's not till ninety eight. So you know he and ninety eight is also you've got mail. So he's not getting a payday off of that. Dang. Maybe we need to revisit Joe versus the volcano and see if it was worth the money. That's yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Uh, ninety one. I'm very fond of this year, year I was born, and I, I'm very pleased with my highest paid actor with Robin Williams. Yeah, that one's actually pretty good. Also, yeah, that maybe feels about right. I would say, like, if I were to think when when we're talking prime big money, Robin Williams, I would say probably mid nineties. Yeah. So this feels a little bit early, but yeah, this sounds about right. Yeah, uh, early 90s, we're again talking Gutenberg method with um, A Wish for Wings That Work, Hook, The Fisher King, Shakes the Clown, Dead Again, Rabbit Ears, um, Fern Gully, The Timekeeper, Aladdin, Toys. So he's just got a lot of things, ninety into or 91 into 92. I probably um, recognize about four of those. <laughs> yes. Uh, Aladdin. Uh, he played a genie in the movie Aladdin, which is a Disney animated fe- feature. I know you know what a wish for wings that work is, but maybe not Aladdin. No. <laughs> what about? Well, thanks for the heads up. Uh, Rabbit ears, the fool and the flying ship. You know that one? No. Shame on you. I remember toys because <laughs> I remember the uh, the VHS box of this with his red hat. Yeah, he's yeah. got a hat on. <laughs> But that's that's all I really know about that movie. Yeah. He'll peak later on and maybe, wink, wink, end up on this list again. But in 1992, he wouldn't because Mr. Kevin Costner would take 1992. Oh, there we go. This, to me, is this is prime Kevin Costner right here. 1992. 1992. Is this, please tell me this is Dances with Wolves. No. This is The Bodyguard is all he made in 1992. Oh, but that was a mega smash hit. Yeah, it was. Uh, the Bodyguard... Uh, or pardon me, what did you say? Dances with Wolves? That was 1990. Yeah. That was early. Uh, using that, using Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, using JFK to build that payday for The Bodyguard. Man, that's that's crazy. And The Bodyguard is... What's funny is I don't think The Bodyguard is recognized as like a Kevin Costner film. Right. Like it's a Whitney Houston film. Right. That's what most people would, would kind of connect that with is, is Whitney Houston. So, hey, good for him. Good for him. While you were talking, I looked up how much Kevin Costner makes per episode of Yellowstone, and it's one point three million dollars per episode. So, and still yeah, making I, that payday. I always liked Kevin Costner. Yeah, like I thought Kevin Costner was a really good actor, and yeah. there were there was maybe a section in the nineties where I thought like he was the biggest celebrity, and it was based off of two movies: Waterworld, Waterworld, <laughs> yeah, and The Postman. The Postman, yeah, just him and his yeah. horse, yeah. If I remember correctly, The Postman was a critical and financial disaster. So was Waterworld. <laughs> so was Waterworld. I yeah. think, in retrospect, people appreciate Waterworld a whole lot more today yeah. than they did back then when it came out. It's true. Uh, that would be another one worth revisiting, because I I bet that movie's trash. Man, it goes Waterworld, Tin Cup, and The Postman. That's a good little three-year run there. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you're saying revisit The Postman or Waterworld? Waterworld or The Postman. <laughs> we'll I would it. check either one of those. We'll do a Costner double feature. Yeah. 1993, Julia Roberts. That one is really shocking. Oh, That's yeah? gotta be, is that Pretty Woman? Let's find out. Uh, Pretty Woman was 1990. Like, I wouldn't, have, I wouldn't have ever put, at any point in my mind, was Julia Roberts the number one actress. Number one. In Hollywood. What did I say? 1993? Yes. Um, we have The Pelican Brief. Okay. And... The Pelican Brief. <laughs> All right. I Love Trouble was coming up, but I've never even heard of it. So uh-uh. Pelican Brief, she was coming off of Hook. Like you said, Pretty Woman, Still Magnolias, Flatliners. Man. Flatliners looks, was awesome. Yeah. Do you it, remember when they remade that? Yeah, like two years ago and it was bad? Yeah, it was very dumb. Speaking of remaking things, didn't a Scream movie just come out like 
three months ago and now another one's out? It wasn't last year, but it was, or maybe it was last year. I feel like they, it was like, last year. Here's the crazy thing about that. It was like a rebooted Scream. It was just called Scream. Yeah. And now they have one coming out that's called Scream 6, which means <laughs> there was never a Scream 5, that technically. Was Scream 5, I guess. Like, what are you doing? Uh, they don't even know. Just a movie a year. Let's crank them out. We'll figure it out well, on the back I, end. I think they realized they done goofed. Yeah. I thought they were. I think they were like, well, we'll make a Scream movie. We'll just call it Scream. And then it was actually like successful. Yep. And it made money. And they're like, well, crap. All right, Scream 6. <laughs> like, what? Oh, man. Let's talk 1994. Uh, Pre-Blade, Wesley Snipes is on this list. Pre-Blade. Pre-Blade. So what was Wesley Snipes? Oh, this is Demolition Man. This is Demolition Man. Um... And Drop Zone. Man, the fact that I knew Demolition Man. No, it's Man. not. Demolition Man came out the year before. This is the Demolition Man video game. I don't even know there was a Demolition <laughs> Man video game. And that's something I would know about. Yeah, you should know that, Aaron. I should know that. Uh, 1995, guess who's back? Tom Hanks. So this is your mid-90s Tom Hanks. We're looking at Apollo. I mean, yeah, we're coming off Forrest Gump. We're looking at Apollo 13, Toy Story, that thing you do. If it was ever Man, going to be. <laughs> that is a killer lineup. Yes. I love that thing you do. Uh, but, uh, man, yeah, that's a that's such a lineup. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah, I, he deserved it that year. That's insane. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not much of a Tom Hanks fan. I kind of get annoyed that they just toss him into every movie nowadays. Mm-hmm. But that is absolutely, that's golden age of him right there. I'm amazed he's not in Spielberg's uh, The Fablements. I, I thought every year yeah. Spielberg would come up to a deadline and be like, crap, Oscars are coming up. I got to make a movie. Where's Tom Hanks? Yeah, and, and get Meryl that Streep. man. <laughs> and that's just how that worked. But uh, not last year. 1996, Jim Carrey. So what? let's see, 1996, I'm going to guess this is Ace Ventura 2. 1996 is The Cable Guy. And probably a payday for 1997's Liar Liar. Okay, that would make sense. Uh, so, it's Cable Guy was 95. Cable Guy was that movie kind of packed in between mm-hmm. his like hot streak that I think was not like nobody liked that movie. It wasn't a very good movie, um, but it was just kind of packed in between there. So he probably got paid for a bad movie. Yeah, I mean, come off a hot streak. What I've noticed, unless you're Steve Gutenberg. You can write your own check, or you can just be in yeah. 90 movies and Gutenberg it. Um, 97 was John Travolta. That one is very shocking to me. Yeah, that's John like, Travolta doesn't make this list until this late in the game. That's, he, he that was doesn't probably on it in the 70s, but I didn't go back that far. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, uh, still, 90, what movie? 97, you've got Mad City, Face Off, and She's So Lovely. Coming off oh, of, it was fa- coming face off off of money right Michael... There. Where he was the angel and phenomenon. Remember where that he got hit by oh, a meteor yeah. or whatever and could memorize a book in two seconds. Uh, yeah, get yeah. Shorty, Pulp Fiction. So again, write your own joke okay. coming off of the back of stuff. Um, and then ninety eight. Here, I think you'll th- you'll say this makes perfect sense. Ninety eight is also Robin Williams. Yes. Yeah, that would make sense. I mean, Flubber had to be in here somewhere, right? Oh yeah, that Flubber money. <laughs> Woo. Uh, Nineteen ninety nine, closing out the nineties is already been on this list and you didn't believe it she's back again it's julia roberts again that's especially shocking this late (laughs) in the game i don't mean to put like you know negative energy here on on julia roberts or anything like that but i just i would never have considered her like the number one actress in america at any point she was like number three at her peak that's kind of crazy well, 1999, she's a little bit of exception there with Notting Hill and Runaway Bride and a paycheck for 2000's Aaron Brockovich. So she, uh, she okay. had a lot yep. going on That's that, true. that year. That's true. Let's get into the 2000s. I want to turn this corner and get into the 2010s. <laughs> the year 2000 was Bruce Willis. Makes sense. Yeah, uh, that was his time. Guess who was 2001? Well, that was obviously Mike Myers. No, that was Julia, <laughs> that was Julia Roberts. What? She's done this three times? (laughs) Three feet, man. Uh, The Mexican, American Sweethearts, Ocean's Eleven. Crazy. Uh, And she's got three movies on the horizon with Grand Champion, Full Frontal, and Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. Maybe a little bit of uh, Gutenberg action getting her on this list for a third time. (laughs) Uh, 2002, we found out what women want with one Mel Gibson. 
Also a little surprising, right? You'd think 90s is when he would peak. You'd think. I don't even know if What Women Want came out in 2000. No, that has to be earlier than 2002. Yeah. What was Braveheart he was probably before that. Oh, Braveheart was way before that. What was he in yeah. 2002? That's, the Simpsons that's crazy. Film Festival. Signs. There we go. We Were Soldiers and Signs. Huh? Okay. Yeah, not really a payday for anything unless it's the Simpsons Film Festival. Um, 2003, Sir Ian McKellen. Tops the chart. Also surprising. <laughs> for, for just growing a beard. Um, That's crazy. <laughs> I told you he'd be in every, well, almost every decade. 2004 is once again Papa Hanks. So what's crazy is this is like a dead heat race between Tom Hanks and Julia Roberts. Roberts. <laughs> what the heck? 2004, he did The Polar Express, Elvis Has Left the Building, The Terminal, and The Lady Killers. All right, so at some point, this turns into action stars, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I, that's what the 2010s I think are. Marvel does that. Yes. I'm going to guess Marvel eventually does that, where your highest paid actors are now just action stars. I think it happens before Marvel. We're getting there. Mm -hmm. uh, 2005, right. this is the turn right here with Keanu Reeves. What would he have done in 2000? Uh, so probably Matrix sequels. Yes. Okay. Let's so, double check. And I'll tell you exactly Matrix ends up becoming a sneaky hit because if I remember correctly, it is a financial bomb. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't make it makes much it, money off the original. No, it makes a lot of money off of video sales. It becomes yeah. popular after it's out of theaters. So I'm sure then he negotiates a much bigger payday for the next movie, so knowing that that will be a box office draw. Uh, you're looking at Ellie Parker. Never heard of it. Thumbsucker. Never heard of it. Constantine Echo, A Scanner Darkly, and The Lake House. Uh, I remember the Lake House Scanner Darkly. Constantine. Constantine. So Constantine, I could see where he probably would have gotten paid for that movie pretty big. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah. I Before looking at the uh, actual movies, I would have never guessed that would not be a Matrix sequel. But hey, here we are. How about 2006 with Ben Stiller? La what? Yeah, 2006, Ben Stiller. It was bound to happen sooner or later, but... W was it? It says who? I feel like with the Meet the Parents and Zoolander and all that, weren't those close together? Let's I, check. I guess, but the highest paid actor? Come on. Uh, 2006, you're looking at Blades of Glory, Tenacious D, and The Pick of Destiny. What was he? This has to be producer, right? Am I on the wrong list? Producer, yes. Let's go. <laughs> uh, actor for 2006. We have coming off of Along Came Polly, Starchy and Hutch, Anchorman, Dodgeball, 2006. You have School for Scoundrels, Tenacious D in the Pick of Destiny, Night at the Museum. Dang. Highest oh, paid I, think Night at the, I think Night at the Museum made a lot of money. Big payday for him. But still. Mm -hmm. 2007. Julia Roberts. <laughs> well, Disney is on the hunt to turn rides into movies. And Sir, or not Sir, he's not knighted. One Johnny Depp was the highest paid actor of 2000. I'm going to guess this is not the first time he'll end up on this list. Uh, you mean last time? First and last. Uh, this is the Should... first and last time he's on this list. What? Yes. Oh, that's really surprising to me. <laughs> really surprising. 2007, you have at Pirates of the Caribbean, At World's End, and Sweeney Todd. It's a good year. Yeah, good year for him. It's a good year. Um, early Pirates, he wasn't, you know, not making as much. Oh, that's still yeah that's still crazy 2008 again i thought this dude would have been on here earlier but 2008's will smith yeah that's a really good point well that's a name i thought would have been brought up way before this mm -hmm. with movies like wild wild west come on now I, right <laughs> he had to be raking in the money from wild wild west he had to uh what did he do this year uh 2008 was hancock and seven pounds okay Hancock, I know, made a sneaky amount of money. Seven Pounds was his uh, first run at trying to get an Oscar, which failed miserably. Mm -hmm. Not a bad movie, though. That's eh, all right. <laughs> okay, so 2009, I'm graduating high school. This is when I think the action movie is like, okay. Okay, not even just the action movie. This is where the problem starts for me. If it's a problem, I want your thoughts on it. This is where franchises take over. Yeah. 2009, not the first one of the franchise, but I guarantee you it's a Transformers movie with Shia LaBeouf being the highest paid actor. Wow. Transformers, Revenge of the Fallen. That's exactly what it is. That is shocking. The fact that he ends up on this list at all. Mm -hmm. And for a movie where 
he's not the star it's the robots <laughs> it's the robot yeah uh that's that's pretty incredible all right so we've entered the 2010s um from this list we're going to talk 2010 to 2019 nine years how many different actors do you think are on this list how many actors do i think are on this list yeah. up to nine okay because this is where we're going to get i'm going to guess there's six there are four holy smokes and two of them i'm like why are you here um 2010 is robert downey jr all right makes sense because he ends up making a bazillion dollars off of iron man uh, yeah this is iron man 2 he didn't get paid too much uh terrence howard was actually paid more on iron man 1 yeah. and iron man 2 that's why Ta- terrence howard left because um robert downey jr gets a big payday he wasn't given because the star of the movie <laughs> gets the more money that's yeah, yeah that's crazy so he does iron man 2 and due date and he is probably getting money for Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows, which is yeah. So Robert Downey Jr., 2010. Out of nowhere, 2011, Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, I mean, Leo, I think. I'm actually surprised he didn't show up a little bit earlier on this list, right. honestly. Yeah, 2011 seems like a very strange year for him to be on there. Shutter Island? Uh, 2011 was The Ides of March and Red Riding Hood. That's producer. Get out of here. Stop producing movies. Just act so I can get the right list the first time. Man, he's not, he doesn't act in a lot of stuff. J. Edgar. Okay. So an Oscar. Right around the corner is Django Unchained. So probably making money off that as well. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, And then 2012 is probably my favorite on this entire list outside of Steve Gutenberg. No, it's Taylor Lautner. (laughs) Wow. Oh, remember wow. him? Talk about striking the iron <laughs> when it is hot. Yeah. It was like, okay. Pay you probably had no business ever being on this list ever. Mm-hmm. And he still pulled it off. So, yeah. hey, good for him. Uh, this is Abduction. Remember that movie where he, the no, trailer was just him running on rooftops and down streets. It was amazing. Field of Dreams 2, The Lockout. What? <laughs> and the Twilight Saga, Breaking Dawn Part 1. <laughs> So obviously this is all because of Field of Dreams too. I love that they made a sequel to this movie. No one's ever heard of. Oh, so good. Oh, that was a straight to DVD <laughs> movie. That is so great. Uh, 2013, you have Robert Downey Jr. 2014, okay. you have Robert Downey Jr. 2015, you have Robert Downey Jr. Dang. Yeah. So no wonder why he quit. Yeah. Well, he never that has to work like, again. I am good forever. <laughs> I, I don't need to act ever again. So that's what you're talking about there with kind of the Marvel effect. Um, And then we take this corner in 2016. Let me just pull up this individual's, make sure I'm on actor. Um, Yep. So starting in 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, and 2020, any guess as who the highest paid actor of every single one of those years I'll give you one. Has it been a name you've mentioned yet? (laughs) It is not Julia Roberts. (laughs) Or Gutenberg. (laughs) My guess would have been Julia Roberts. I have a lot of money riding on her right now. So have you mentioned this actor yet to this point? No. He's he's been number two and number three a couple years to Robert Downey Jr. 2016 is the first time he's the highest paid actor. I'm going to guess. I'm wrong. I would guess it's The Rock. Okay. I will tell you, this guy turned his money into a drink. He's put a lot of his acting money into a drink. And I'm pretty sure he owns XFL, right? He does, yeah. It is Dwayne Johnson. Wow. I can't believe I got that right. (laughs) So many years in a row. We're looking at uh, 2016 here. We're missing San Andreas, so that's something. Central Central Intelligence, Moana, The Fate of the Furious, Baywatch, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, Rampage, Skyscraper, Fighting with My Family, Fast and Furious, Hobbs and Shaw, Ballers, the TV show he does. Uh, He's in Fortnite, Jumanji, The Next Level, all within that run. Oh, and 2020 as well. So a Taylor Swift music video and Black Adam Precursor, where he did a short, and some WWE stuff. That man was just printing his own money. Right. Just printing it. Yeah. That's crazy. So that's what I'm talking about with the 2020s. Two actors... I don't know what happened. You don't really have reason to be there, DiCaprio yeah. or Lautner. I, I like one of you. Um, Lautner, I know. <laughs> Field of Dreams that, 2 did it for yeah, you. Field of Dreams 2, that emotional roller coaster. Uh, yeah. But it's just Robert Downey Jr. and Dwayne Johnson. 
Yeah. Is Just that a problem? Pure domination. Yeah. Is that a problem? Yeah. Is, is this how movies should be? Franchise? Uh, well. Highest paid actor. What's funny is I thought my whole life was like this. Like, I thought yeah. my whole life was like massive runs from actors. But it sounds like that really wasn't the case. Uh, it's not surprising. I, I'm i different, though. Like, you and I have talked about this before. I don't go to movies because of the actors. Mm -hmm. It's very rare. Like, an actor isn't a draw for me or an actress isn't a draw for me. It's usually, like, writers and directors are draws. Mm -hmm. Like, I will go see this guy's movies because I like him. Mm -hmm. But it's very rare that I'll go because of the actor or actress. Like, I, I, it's just not like that for me. But clearly studios recognize... I, and think about that, though. Like, even you named a bunch of The Rock's movies. Were any of those financial bombs? Mm, I don't think so. Especially not in China. No. So, well, that's the other thing that I think ends up happening. That I think you actually pinpoint on something else that ends up happening here. What ends up happening is once you get to this era of movies, it's so international now. Yeah. It's such an international experience that they they aren't just looking for actors that are a big deal in the United States. They're looking for an actor that is huge everywhere. So I think that's another reason why you're seeing some of these names pop up for long stretches of time, just because that's that's completely changed. Yeah. Yeah. What worries me is these movies give box office numbers. So studios mm -hmm. look at these and there are less of the movies that I want to see with the good directors and yeah. the good writers because they get pulled to work on these almost mad lib uh, scripts where call it trash. Yeah, we are going to They're trash. We're going to call you the writer, but you have to include this, this, and this. This happened in the past. You have to set up these seven movies in the future. So it is just a, a mad lib, right? They're just filling in yeah. blanks where they yeah. can. And yeah. are we coming out of it? I mean, I have 2021 and 2022. Would you like to know who those highest paid were? Yes, I do. Uh, 2021 was actually Daniel Craig. That's great, but That's... it's for the wrong reasons. It's No Time to Die. It's a James Bond yeah. franchise movie. Uh, and then Tom Cruise, of course, was 2022. Yeah, no that makes sense. <laughs> yep. Uh, but is that just the world we live in? Is everything has to be franchised now? And I know we've talked about he this, but we've never actually... I have never looked at decades and broken it down and been like, man, it's more clear than I even realized. Well, yeah, because what's happening is even when like an odds and end type of movie goes out there, it just gets turned into a franchise. Yeah. So, uh, like, I mean, let's... Glass Onion. Yeah. They're making yeah, the that's third a great, one right now. That's a great example. Or even what I was just, like, I was just thinking about this the other day. Because um, Megan just came out on Peacock, mm -hmm. and they have an unrated version on there, and I was reading about it, and they were talking about how, like, the sequel's already been greenlit, and it's already been written. <laughs> and I was like, you know, here was an odd, odds and end just type of movie that ends up making a ton of money. It suddenly gets really, really popular. And all of a sudden, well, now it's a franchise. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to go and make Megan a franchise. Um, and that that's that seems to be the case. Oh, think of A Quiet Place. Yeah. John Krasinski had no interest in, in turning this into a franchise. And now we're working on our third film here in an expanded universe. So it's like, yeah, this is, this is unfortunately, this is just kind of how these things are going to play out. That any original idea somebody has has to become a franchise. Or yeah. It has to be franchisable in some way. And just to me, it feels like they're locking on the wrong thing. You have yeah. this perfect storm that makes this, I'm, and I'm just going to use uh, Glass Onion for you, uh, for an example. You have this perfect storm that creates success for you. You've got the writer, you've got the director, you've got the actors. And what you take away from that is, okay, this is the formula that has to be made. Now I'm going to take all these people and shove them in this formula. Whereas, why can't you just turn around and say, that was super creative and unique. Do it again, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and what else do you have creative instead of trying to shoehorn it into... And maybe Glass Onion is not the best example because clearly, I was thinking about this the other day. You've got Glass Onion, uh, you've got uh, Knives Out, you've got Poker Face, and he's tapped to do a trilogy for Star Wars, Ryan Johnson. How great would a murder mystery Star Wars be? <laughs> that's what I that want would from be Ryan perfect. Johnson. Um, so that's I, the I think opposite the, of what I'm selling here, but still. I think the margin of error, though, is, is too wide here. And yeah. I think that's part of the problem. Is they, they really, studios just don't want to take risks anymore. Yeah. Because it's just way more expensive to make these movies. Mm -hmm. If it works, so, so I fix it type mentality. I get but it. this is where I think, I, I, I know I just mentioned Megan, but this is where Blumhouse has bucked convention. Mm -hmm. And they said, we'll just make a bunch of super cheap movies. And if four of those are a huge success, that'll help fund everything. And we'll make a profit off of it because of it. So it's been yeah. the exact opposite approach where I think they've allowed flexibility and freedom to make weird, strange things. A24 is another great example of a mm -hmm. studio 
that takes chances and it's actually built a cult following because of it. Like it's actually yeah. been beneficial to it because of that. Um, so, but yeah, I think that's part of the issue is to just sit there and say, Hey, we'll just throw a bunch of money at these creative people and they'll just create something creative. Mm -hmm. Doesn't always translate into money and that's all they really need. And that's all they yeah. really want. You brought up an interesting point that I didn't even think of with like Julia Roberts and Jane Fonda in this type of, world we've built that everything's a franchise everything's an action franchise and they're going to be the highest paid people is there ever going to be room for a jane fonda or a julia roberts to be on this list ever again if this is the way no. they stay or, no. or a steve uh, gutenberg or a steve gutenberg is, is the bigger question I, i'm gonna say no i'm gonna say that the only way a woman makes it onto this is if if we find one that's like an action superstar mm -hmm. that's likable across the board florence Pugh. As the new black. No, I, like, like you could have, you could have maybe seen a world if this doesn't get screwed up, where maybe Gal Gadot ends up on that. Mm. But uh, I, I think now that's probably all messed up, yeah. and and that's probably going to knock her off course a little bit on this. But it might happen. It will not be just a Julia Roberts esque actress, yeah, doing serious roles for serious movies. No, it'll it'll have to be an action star for the foreseeable future. I don't see that changing anytime soon. The real question is, in the next six years. What Marvel movie is Tom Hanks going to have to star in to get back on this? He's going to have to. <laughs> He's going to have to, and it'll be on, it'll be something on DC. DC's now taking chances. Yeah, yeah. So probably somewhere over there. All right. Well, what is out of these that we talked about? What's your favorite decade? I mean, I I'd probably say the two thousands okay. was my favorite decade. It feels like the last time, obviously, that you would see non action stars on this list. Yeah. But they, I felt like they were still taking some chances out there, so it was you know it was probably that last great effort of those. And obviously, I was way more involved with my movies during that time. Mm -hmm. But it's a close fight between that and the '90s. I'm the exact same way. The the 2000s has no repeats, has some very interesting names like Mel Gibson, Bruce yeah. Willis, Ian McKellen, Ben Stiller. You got a lot of variety there. Um, but the '90s are just so weird <laughs> with the movies. They are <laughs> that I love that type of just weird nostalgia. What type of weird hole are we going to go down into? There's some good here? comedies. There were comedy yeah. guys sitting in there, so that's yes. that's kind of cool to have that. You got Kevin Costner. Who, who doesn't? And Kevin Costner. Kevin Costner. One point three million dollars to walk through one scene of a TV show. Good on him. I mean, that's a very popular TV show. <laughs> it is world's number one. Uh, but that's all I got. See you. <laughs>